Hey, Fit Fighter family. We are here this morning for a Friday edition of the Steelcast. And I am so psyched about my guest today. It feels like a special honor for us to have Matt McCrane, who is with us today from Texas. He is the kicker for the Cleveland Browns. And wow, to have an NFL athlete and just an uh, elite professional with us today to talk about all things related to inner steel. I can't imagine someone who has more commentary about finding your inner steel than someone in your position, Matt. So thank you so much for being here today. We're super psyched to have you. Sure, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So let's dive right into it. The first thing I like to do, rather than me rattling off a, a biography of Matt McCrane, let's hear from you. If you were to give us some cliffs notes from the autobiography of Matt McCrane, your family, your life outside the NFL, inside the NFL, give me some bullet points and um, we'll go from there and dig in. Oh gosh. Okay. I'll, I'll try to make it quick. Um, you know, I think from, from a young age, uh, I've always been active in, in youth sports, um, team sports in particular, um, you know, from baseball to soccer and then youth football when I started doing that. But um, ever since a young age, my parents started me in a, you know, that team building environment. And so um, that's what I was familiar with growing up. I gosh, probably at three or four years old when I was doing soccer. And, and, you know, that was my first love was, was soccer. That was uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed doing. And so from uh, a very early youth age all the way up until about uh, middle school is then when soccer took off and I started playing club and Olympic development when that was big back uh, gosh 15 years ago um, so that that started taking off into um, you know into that high school time period and so um, when I when it started getting gosh or maybe my freshman year of high school uh, I started missing a lot of family time and, and church activities because being from small town Texas I had to travel to Dallas and then uh, to Lubbock for two different teams uh, as far as Olympic development and uh, and club went and so that was the struggle that the kind of inner struggle that I found was that we were doing a lot of travel every weekend and during the week traveling three four hours to get to soccer practice after after school um, and that's kind of where I made the decision that um, and I gave up my childhood love of, of soccer um, for that, for the family time. And, and as I said, church, we were traveling every Sunday for tournaments and things like that. So that was a tough decision for me to, to call soccer quits. Um, of course, we still had high school soccer, but as far as club and, and competitive soccer went, um, I gave that up. Um, and it's funny how things work is uh, I wasn't too big into football. I was, I was totally soccer all growing up played a little bit of youth football. And then once I quit soccer, we got into, uh, you know, middle school and, and freshman uh, high school football. And I think it was until my junior year, I made some notes here, until junior year, our, our varsity kicker had got injured. And so I remember we were all at practice lined up and they said, okay, we need a kicker for this week who can kick. And me being a soccer player, I said, hey, I raised my hand. I played wide receiver, slot receiver at the time. And I said, you know, I'll give it a shot. So I went out and kicked that Friday, um, did pretty well. And then we made it to the playoffs that year. That was my junior year, 2000, uh, let's see, 2010, 2011, um, where then I hit a, a 52-yard field goal uh, my junior year. And so that was with like minimal training, minimal practice at the kicker position. And, uh, and I, you know, frankly got a little lucky on, on the kick, but that's kind of where things exploded. Uh, you know, into my kicking profession was that, that 52 yard field goal. So then senior year, I started taking a little bit more serious, went to some kicking camps and uh, got a little bit more focused on, on kicking and punting and things like that. Um, and then fortunately was offered a, a full scholarship to go kick at Kansas state, um, which I spent five years there. Um, met my gorgeous wife, Megan, uh, the second year in, which like we just talked about celebrated, we just celebrated our second wedding anniversary. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, but to kind of keep rolling forward, um, gosh, I spent five years, all five years redshirted at, at Kansas State in, in Manhattan, Kansas, the Little Apple, um, completed my undergrad. Uh, and then now I'm, I'm working on my master's currently. Uh, but gosh, Kansas State was, uh, you know, we can dive deeper into that later. But as far as, you know, uh, uh, the college struggle, I guess you could say, you know, five years of of, of gritty uh, off-season work and things like that, that, that kind of led me to where 
to being in the National Football League and going through the ups and downs of that and, you know, being a starting kicker and then not and bouncing back and forth. And so I had a unique role at Kansas State, um, which then kind of, uh, you know, jumped me into the NFL. So 2018, I, that was my first year out of college, uh, was with the Arizona Cardinals, spent the first three months of the offseason there, got released before the season started, uh, signed with the Oakland Raiders, spent five weeks there, had game winning kick my first game, um, spent four or five weeks with them, then got released, went back to Arizona, got released again, and then uh, finished the year in Pittsburgh. So that that was my 2018, my intro into the National Football League, four teams, um, five different, you know, stints, contracts, and it that was tough. You know, that, that really was a tough time for us um, because we were moving from city to city, not knowing in between teams if I was going to get picked back up. Uh, but as I said, ended that season really well in Pittsburgh, had a game winner uh, week 17 uh, against uh, the Bengals and spent the offseason with Pittsburgh, uh, got released again in the offseason from Pittsburgh. And then all of 2019 was crickets. We didn't we heard nothing. We we were pretty disappointed with how, you know, things went in 20, uh, 2018, the end of 2018 with Pittsburgh. I ended really well. And then 2019 did not hear anything that was. That was a, um, a tough time for, for my wife and I and figuring out what we wanted to do if the NFL was still it. Um, and then the opportunity, the XFL came up uh, and I was hesitant to do that because I'd heard, you know, once you leave the NFL and you go to some of these other leagues, it's really, really difficult to get back in. Um, and so I was hesitant to do that, but with, you know, family support and, and talking with different coaches and other players, they, we thought that was uh, the right role for me. So I did the XFL, did that for gosh, two months and then COVID-19 shut us down. So that, that ended the XFL. Uh, we spent those two or three months up in New York. Um, and then like I said, COVID, COVID shut us down, but fortunately I had a really good career in the XFL. I went 10 for 10, hundred percent. And so um, I think the Browns saw, uh, some of my performances there and signed me and that's where I'm currently at. So I spent all of 2020 with the Browns on their practice squad, um, you know, ready to go kind of in a, uh, in a, with the COVID situation, they had a backup kicker uh, on the roster, which usually they don't have. Um, but due to COVID with the testing and requirements and things like that, they, they needed a, needed a backup kicker. So I spent all of 2020 in, in Cleveland, Ohio and, and that's where I am. I re-signed a 2021 contract, and I'll be headed back again this fall. So, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> if that's a if that's a quick cliff note for you, I just uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm like it's thinking been a crazy, like, okay, crazy how many life. hours do I have to dig into every aspect of the you know every chapter that we just went through? So, real quick, yep. let's cover a couple things, and then I'm going to get sure. back to that 52 yard field goal moment, which I think is so interesting. So, real quick yep. to cover down. What was it about Megan? Was this love at first sight? Let's get real for a second. I'm sure that our, uh, our, our Fit Fighter family would love to hear the little family details and also tell us about brothers, sisters, parents, just real quick. Sure, yeah. So Megan, I met Megan in college. Like I said, she uh, worked for the athletic department, worked in football and recruiting. Um, so I met her my, I guess it'd be the first, middle of the first year, second year, met her. Um, of course, being a Texas girl and me being from Texas, I there weren't very many Texas girls in, in Kansas. And so when I met Megan, to me, it was, I, I was like, who is this girl? I got to meet her. And so I uh, had actually went to the, uh, the lobby of, of our residence hall and, and went down and kind of shook her hand and met her. And she said, that's what kind of um, stuck out to her was none of the other guys would do that. They, they didn't come up and, and there was nothing formal about it. And so she thought that was pretty unique and that's kind of what started us. Um, but yeah, she, she worked all four or five years um, in the athletic department. And so we spent time traveling to bowl games and, and all that together. So that's, that's kind of how we met. Love those stories. And then <laughs> you're, uh, and then you're, you're the name of your hometown and your, your parents, and do you have any brothers and sisters or other, other extended family? Sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm from Brownwood, Texas, small town, Texas, about 25,000 people. Um, I have a younger sister, Lizzie. Uh, she's about three years younger than me. And then my parents are Stephen and Lori um, McCrane. Uh, like I said, we're from, from Brownwood, Texas, small town, uh, hardworking Central Texas people. Yeah. And they still live back there in Brownwood? 
Mm-hmm. So we moved, my wife and I do now as well. We moved back. Uh, we lived in Fort Worth for a little bit, uh, but we moved back to kind of help my my downtown hometown, downtown area. They're, they're doing kind of revitalization movement of, of old historic buildings and we're kind of helping do that. So we're having a good time. That is fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving, I'd love to hear a little more about that project a little later on. So let's dig in for a second. I'm going to jump forward to um, a question I wanted to ask a little later, but since you mentioned it and that 52 yard field goal and that sort of moment, and we, we all have think about these sort of moments, you know, when I think about like our inner steel and this sort of, which is a theme for me about, you know, kind of big moments in people's lives. And for you, I, you know, I've always been a fan of your position on the field because as a rugby fullback myself, you know, in college, I always had, it felt like, you know, many, many plays were sort of those huge moments, right? Where you, you, I mean, games on the line, lots on your, I mean, the entire, you know, sort of success or failure of the, of the team at that moment could be on your shoulders. Walk us through what's going on in Matt McCrane's mind right before you, from the moment you see, okay, we're calling a, a field goal, you know, we're calling a kick, you're coming onto the field, you're getting ready. I'm always seeing those motions. You get set. Walk us through that from your mindset standpoint. What is happening there with your mind and emotions? Sure. And I think for me, and that's always what kind of has set me apart from you know, from a high school kid that made it to the division one level and into the national football league was, was absolutely my mindset and, and kind of training your mind to focus and, and reel back in the situation. And, you know, frankly, for, for the national football league, I've learned that it, it's just for me to do my job. And the more that I think about the consequences of doing that job, whether that be incorrectly or I do my job correctly and we win the game, I can't think about those in the situation. And so when I'm jogging out on the field, I'm solely thinking about putting that ball and visualizing the kick, um, you know, going right down the middle of the uprights, you know, taking the factors that I can control and that I can play with, whether that be the wind, um, the ball lean, I'm telling my holder to lean it a certain way. Um, the laces direction, those are all things that I can control on where I'm kicking and where I'm hanging, but you know, things I can't control like the crowd noise or, um, you know, maybe the turf condition is where I'm going to plan. I can't control what my foot's going to do. And so I just, that's something that I thought that stuck out with me at an early age was that I could mentally, I was able to control my mind. Um, and I think that led to, to college as well. And, and I credit, you know, my college a lot for giving me that mental training and, and, and the off season conditioning and our strength coach, Chris Dawson at Kansas state, that that's what led me to where I am. And if it wasn't for that, uh, I probably wouldn't be in the national football league, but, you know, going, going back to high school, you know, for me, I wasn't, I was five foot 10, 160 pounds. I wanted to be a division one quarterback. That was my goal coming out. Um, but of course I wasn't, I wasn't gifted that way. You know, God didn't have that plan for me. And, um, I, you know, I, I, I worked hard and I, and I earned, um, you know, to be where I was in college in the NFL and, um, you know, going through all the, the high school, uh, drama of, of varsity, of, you know, football and whether you have this group that you hang out with. And, um, you know, that, that was the tough part for me was figuring out what my fit was. And, and, uh, you know, honestly, I just, I went out, I, I didn't go eat lunch with the kids. I, I didn't, um, I didn't do those things. I went out and I, and I kicked footballs and I went and ate in the training room and I went in the, in, uh, the strength and conditioning, you know, the weight room and just focused. I knew my goal and I knew what I wanted. And it's always been just for me to do my job. And so to jump, jump forward from that, from high school and then to, to college, that's exactly what it's been was it's just consistently, you know, training my mind to, to focus on what, what my uh, goal was and to eliminate all those distractions. Yeah. Wow. So, so interesting. And that's interesting to hear that you had that sort of performance mindset, sort of rigor, you know, in your college, you know, curriculum and sort of through that, because I, you know, that's something I've noticed that's cropping up in so many different, you know, amateur and collegiate environments, you know, but sort of really putting these pieces all together of the holistic, you know, mind, body, spirit, you know, behind the, the elite athlete and the, and the top of performance. So I love hearing you chat about that. Um, I was thinking, you know, I'd love to hear about, so two, two questions on the story you told as your evolution as an athlete. One is, I mean, obviously 
we're so good at looking back and piecing together sort of hindsight's 2020, <laughs> like, oh, that's what we were thinking then. But you feel like when you're a little kid and you were that soccer player, did you feel like you wanted from the very that very early age, like I'm I'm destined, like I have it in me, I'm destined and I want, I have this like sort of deeply embedded, you know, pilot light desire to be in the NFL or to be at the top level of whatever game it would be, whether it's soccer, ultimately football. Yep. Or was that more of like, an evolution over time and you kind of kept doing things. And then you had that moment with that field goal. Tell us a little more. Cause I think probably a lot of our young athletes probably thinking about that, you know, all of us have our dreams and hopes and yeah. wishes. And I always wonder sure. when, for those who do reach it to the top, the very top, like you have, what, what was that like when you were younger? Yep. You know, I, I did personally, I knew, uh, as I told, told you earlier, I knew what my goals were. And I knew I wanted to be a profession, professional athlete in some aspect, whether that was football or soccer or whatever I did, I knew I was going to work hard and be a hundred percent at that. Um, and, uh, for me, you know what, gosh, I, I hindsight, as you said, is 2020 and looking back through the things and through the evolution of, of whether I wanted to go professionally in soccer or, you know, my dad went to the university of Texas and my goal was to, to go play football for the university of Texas. And of course, that didn't happen. I went and played at Kansas state and we beat them every year and had a, had a fun time doing it. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I think for me and, and to tell other, other people out there listening is, uh, I personally believe that if, if you want to become a professional athlete or, or you want to, you have this goal that you can reach, it's absolutely obtainable. Um, and whether you're, uh, you know, it does take, it does take a God given ability and a gift and, and the mental training and things like that, that, that led me to where I am. But I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in hard work and, and that it does beat talent any given day uh, as long as you're willing to give in the effort. And, and that's if it wasn't for that, um, for me personally, I, I wouldn't be in the National Football League if it wasn't for the training that I had in college and uh, the ups and downs, because it is a bumpy life and, and a bumpy road that we're on. And uh, I've had many failures and it's just getting back up, get on the horse and, and keep going. Um, and so uh, I do credit, uh, the university, you know, I want to, I want to hit on that point. I, wanna, I do credit Kansas state for, for bringing me in and trusting in me, uh, as a five foot 10, 160 pound kid from central Texas. Um, because a lot of the division one schools, such as the university of Texas, uh, didn't pay much attention to me at all. And I think that's the same story with all of my teammates at, at Kansas state. I think if you watch Kansas state play football on TV, you say no way they're going to compete with Oklahoma and Texas and Oklahoma state and all these big division one schools. But, uh, it was our coach at the time, Bill Snyder, who was uh, a hall of fame coach. Um, but he was known for discipline and toughness. And, you know, we have the 16 goals for success that he came up with when he started that turnaround, uh, you know, in the 1990s, uh, our 16 goals. And, and I can get you a print off of that and, and you can maybe add that to, a. uh, to the clip, but it's such a cool 16 goals for success. I mean, it goes through a list of all the different goals that the coach had for us. And, um, because, you know, most schools as a, as a kicker, you know, you go on your own field and kick on your own and do your own thing. The team will full practice, but at Kansas state, that was not it. Uh, kickers were in every off season aspect. We went through, um, the off season training that every other position did. And, uh, that was tough. There were times where I wanted to quit and hang it up and, say this isn't for me and be a normal student. Um, but I, I do, I credit the university and, and coach Bill Snyder for, uh, for keeping me in it because if it wasn't for them, I, I wouldn't be here. That's for sure. Yeah. What an awesome point. And we definitely, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely post that um, as well. That sounds like an incredible thing for us all to be able to, to get a little inside scoop on. Tell us a great, great segue, you know, talking about Bill and, and coaches, Tell us who else has been particularly influential in your life um, as a as a person, as an athlete, um, or any other aspect. You know, a few people who have really been, you know, very meaningful, whether mentors or just friends or confidants or whatever else. Sure. Yeah. No, I'd have to say, you know, my family too was was a huge support system, um, especially during the National Football League and, and being cut so many times and bouncing from team to team, but. Uh, I credit coaches and teachers from an early age. Um, you know, they were the ones that developed me into who I am. And, you know, whether that be in the classroom, uh, coaches and teachers both alike, 
or on the football field, um, you know, they challenged me, they challenged us and they challenged, uh, you know, all the kids out there. And if it wasn't, you know, I keep saying this, but it really, if it wasn't for them, um, it, it would be a, it'd be a tough road. And so, um, you know, I guess to, to answer your question, um, you know, my parents, coaches, teachers, uh, gosh, there's so many I could name that, uh, that pop into my head and faces that I see in my head that, that come up. But, um, yeah, th- those are the two really, uh, the, the teachers in the classroom, you know, uh, luckily I, I didn't really struggle with that. Grades were, were, were pretty good for me. I, I came out of high school with a good GPA and, a, and, and academic help and, and full scholarship at Kansas state. But, um, I, I credit those people and, and the family support for sure. Yeah. I mean, I love the shout out, you know, and I think I totally agree. I I can't, I mean, I can picture moments with coaches and teachers, you know, throughout my life that yep. have been so impactful and we, we just, you know, we, we, of course we appreciate them, I think, but we, we definitely don't, you know, sort of sing, sing those praises from the rooftops, you know, as much as we should. So I'm, I'm loving that. And I think it'd be fun to, to do a shout out, you know, to those, uh, the inner steel of the coaches and teachers who are behind the scenes, you know, making, making, you know, people, making athletes like you, you know, really shine. And um, so I'm, you know, grateful for that shout out. So let's talk a little bit about kind of that long winding road and that in season versus off season and sort of, you know, how do you, as you, if you think about the 365 days of the year, how do you, how do you kind of carve your path, you know, in season, off season, you're moving around, you live in Texas, you're playing for the Browns, you're traveling. Um, sure. How do you kind of keep like, how do you keep sane? How do you think about, how do you plan your year? Just what a kind of tactically, you know, what's all that like? Yep. Well, you know, I wish for me over the last three years when I came out of college, I, I had a consistent schedule <laughs> or a consistent <laughs> sure. or a consistent season and an off season or an in season yeah. Um, I, I do wish it was that simple, but in the kicking position for me, kickers bounce around a lot, um, from team to team before they finally stick with, uh, with that team. But, uh, you know, one thing that I noticed whenever I was being cut and released and, and jumping from team to team and is, is being a pro being a professional athlete, you know, and, and keeping that routine, even when I'm not, you know, and so when I'm on a team and I have, uh, all the luxuries of a, of a, you know, million dollar weight room facility, or that be a dining structure facility, a nutritionist, all the resources that I have on each team, uh, you kind of take for granted when you're there, because as soon as you get cut, I lose all that. I lose my strength and conditioning routine. I lose my, my, my meal prep. I lose all those things. And so when I was getting released, when I got released from Arizona in the off season, it took about three or four weeks before I got picked up by Oakland. And during that time, um, I probably wasn't a pro as much as I should have been and being prepared for that next call, because I was just grateful that I had the opportunity with the Cardinals and knowing that, that I should be there and that I deserve to be in the national football league. That was, that was a whole different thing. And in, in knowing my, my place and being prepared for that. And um, I think, you know, when you look at my off season schedule, like right now, I'm uh, I took about, two month break after the season to, to, uh, to kind of let my hip and my body and mind kind of recover from that strenuous, uh, year long training. Um, but right now I'm, I'm, I'm back on the grind. I'm back at it, kicking three times a week, being prepared for, of course, gosh, with COVID, whether we, uh, return back April, uh, second week of April, or whether we, we return in August We're we're not really, we haven't heard from the NFL yet on, on what we're going to do, but, um, that was the big thing for me was being a pro even when I wasn't, even when I was sitting at home as a free agent, um, you know, training, I I've got to be prepared for that next workout that and the next opportunity that comes my way, because there are so little opportunities in the NFL. You might only get one or two. Luckily I've had, you know, four or five opportunities and, and I've capitalized off those. Um, but if you don't, you're not prepared. Uh, you're just, you know, you're, you're, kissing it away you know and so um for me i wish i wish i had a, a, a consistent off-season or in-season activity but for the last three years it's been a grind it's been non-stop training and staying in shape and ready for that next that next workout because i'm sure if you talk to many nfl free agents that's the same story yeah yeah and so do you have like you know every day <clears throat> are there like you know 
three things you do when you wake up in the morning, like, you know, you yodel and then you like eat an avocado <laughs> and then you, you know, like I always wonder like, cause I feel like some people do have those extremes and then some people are like, yeah, no, I eat like, you know, honey nut Cheerios. <laughs> yeah. What is no, that's right. your, like a couple details and fun, fun details about your day to day? Sure. No, I think that comes with the position as well. You know, in the, in the kicker position, uh, just like an MLB pitcher, just like uh, somebody that has a repetitive motion over and over and over again. I mean, there's there's only so many things I can do. Um, you know, three times a week is the max for me. You know, I, I lift four times a week, but I only kick, you know, three times a week. And during season, that goes to twice or once, once a week. And so it's different than me. If you were looking at my Instagram page and my training regimen and what I do versus Odell Beckham Jr., one of my teammates, you're going to see a completely different thing because those guys, um, they have to, they have to, you know, do that kind of work and put that work in to be at the, at the professional stage. And I do too, just on, you know, those certain times, whether it's three days a week and I'm spending an hour or two hours a day kicking and training. Um, that's when my focus is on those individual times. Um, but as far as the rest of the times go, man, um, I'm active right now in our community and, and doing small town projects and, helping our revitalization movement. That's what I'm doing this off season. But as far as uh, a daily breakfast routine, <laughs> um, no, for me being 160 pounds, I I've got to stay in shape and keep my leg fast. So I'm not doing anything too crazy. Just uh quick twitch training for me. And, um, but no, I'm, I, like I said, I think you'll see a difference between, um, uh, you know, kickers and punters on, on social media versus some of the other guys. Now, not saying we don't put our work in because we definitely do. And you have to, in order to be at the pinnacle of your sport, um, just not, uh, we're limited on the amount of reps that we can do because we do this repetitive motion over and over and over again on our leg. And that's why all these MLB pitchers have surgeries like they do because they, you can't keep up with it. Yeah, it's so interesting you bring that up because there's sort of like there there's the there's yeah, there's the differences in the training and then the differences in in game day and then the differences in those that mindset of that moment you talked about, you know, right before the kick. And so I I love, you know, hearing that. Yeah, on one team especially with football. I mean, you just doesn't get much more diverse than that, I think, you know, in terms of the type of athlete and probably the differences in the in the day to day, you know, whether it's yep. from training to eating to mindset to cadence, you know, op tempo and I, I'm loving sort of hearing about that too. So for the, for our, for our young uh, athletes out there who are kickers or maybe they're soccer players and now they're thinking maybe this is for them too. <laughs> yeah, so, right. um, so, you know, I'd love to, to hear what advice do you have for young athletes who or or, you know, Maybe also just like, you know, just young people in general. It doesn't have to be an athlete, you know, someone who's just has a passion for something. Um, yep. Or maybe they're like wondering if they should have a passion for something, right? Because there's also sort of that thing now. I mean, I have, I have two little girls and I think like as a mom, like, okay, I'm always like, I, should I be hat like Emery's five? Should I be like having her in three sports? You know, should she be like learning? Or should I be like getting in there, getting the game? And because now, you know, there is, there's a lot of these pressures and, and on young people and we're going sure. through the world of COVID right now. What advice do you have, you know, for, for just, um, as you're growing up, you know, setting your sights on, on the, you know, living a, living a life that feels like, you know, really full in the moment, but also kind of setting your sights on those goals. And if you do have aspirations to be at the elite level, you know, advice to really help through that kind of long winding road you've described. And, and if you do aspire to that level of greatness in anything you're doing, you know, to make sure you get to that finish line, you know, yep. just a couple pieces of advice would be great. Yep, sure. And, uh, you know, I tried to hit on that earlier a little bit, whether you want to be a professional athlete or you want to be uh, the best at whatever you do, whether whether that is athletically or or, or something else. Um, I can speak on athletically because I've been there and I've done that. But as as far as the the other, um, you know, segues go, if you're you're somebody that's watching this and you want to be successful in, in whatever avenue of life that is, to me, it's it's giving your full effort. You know, and, and that's something that I, I see a lot in the world today is um, there is a lot of laziness out there. And there's a lot of people that that just, uh, you know, that, that aren't they don't have that drive. 
and and for some people i guess that's okay you know if you if you're okay with with being mediocre and you're okay with that and and that's i'm not saying there's something wrong with that and but if you do want to be the best at what you do and you want to um have a life full of success it it takes hard work and and especially if you're not gifted like i wasn't um from an early age and you're small or um you're not fast or there's there's so many things that you can work on um that get you to the level that you want to be at um it's just that hard work and that drive and and i encourage people just to give that full effort and 100 percent at each time at each each point in training in the off season and in season um whether you're uh, a kid in the classroom and and you have a piece of homework that you that you don't want to finish that's to me the small part that led me to where I was was just the the training and um from that aspect is just uh, just to give your full effort because to me that that's what that's what that gets you to the top is the the hard work and that's what for my other teammates that I've talked to um have the same similar story there's a few guys a few guys that that had the talent and that don't have to give in the the effort um but that is few and far between and it's very hard to do yeah you know i love that you've touched on like the, the, the sort of like in general, I love that you just like are coming right out and like, you know, delivering that, like, look, you know, life's not easy. Like there's no athlete that's sort of, you know, no matter how, how much it looks like overnight success, that's like not, you know, that's never what that is. And the second thing I love you touched on is the fact that you have sort of like a little bit of an underdog status, you know, in terms of the, the, you know, that of sort of the, the grind and the, and, and probably that people have more strength. One of the things with Fit Fighter that I'm always focused on is, you know, you, people have, have more strength inside of them that they can unleash than they ever imagined. Yep. You know, and someone like you, I mean, I've never had, you know, like a a chief sort of at the the like pinnacle level of of sports I've been involved in. But what I have done is sort of like always, I I was like nurtured as a kid to like step outside that comfort zone, you know, and try, for example, I'm more of a sprint athlete and, and like, I tried like half Ironmans, you know, as when I like got into more of that kind of like momhood, my, I'm in my thirties, you know, my sprint slowed down a little bit. Let's like try some endurance sports. And it unleashed like this whole new, you know, this whole new part of me that I didn't really know was there. And this like strength that, you know, yeah, took some serious work hours a day. It's like grueling grinding. I'm not going to do it forever. I'm not doing it now. But like, I love that you touched on that because people, I think sometimes fall into that path of laziness and mediocrity because they haven't had someone who is like, touched them to be like, right. you, you're strong inside. Like you've strength, you've never tapped into so yep. much. So absolutely, I love that you hit on that. Well, and I think that's what, you know, to, to touch on fit fighter a little bit, if you don't mind, that's what kind of, that's why I reached out to you because whenever, uh, you know, being in college and being a marketing uh, uh, major and then working on my MBA, one of the first classes I had that we were analyzing Shark Tank episodes and and seeing what could have gone right or what went right and what went wrong and and that's what we did in in one of my college classes and so when I I saw your product and your drive and your military background I thought man that aligns with me perfectly because of the mental training that I've had in college and it is it's striving to get whether for something as small as in getting that extra rep or finishing through the through the finish line and and I can take this back through college gosh we we would have uh, our strength and conditioning coach, Chris Dawson. We'd, we'd have got every drill we'd have, whether that be ropes or ladders or tires. If we didn't make it through that line or we didn't touch the line, we'd start the whole group over or we'd do the entire segment over. And that's what helped us in college was the, the discipline aspect and, and the, the one and O mentality. And, and that's what aligned with me and you guys and fit fighter. And that's why I reached out to you because I, uh, when I was watching the episode on TV, I was like, oh my gosh, like I've got to reach out to her. That that aligns with me and what I do perfectly. So so that's why I reached out to you. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm I'm really grateful. And I think that we we have a big, yeah, I think we're tapping into something that can really, you know, as one of the things I said to you when we chatted um but before this conversation, you know, we were talking about how we have an opportunity here to 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 connect us all to make people realize that we're all a little bit, we're all a little closer than we think, you know, in terms of our our ability to really, you know, d- dig into that 
inner strength. And we're not all going to be, you know, NFL, NFL kickers or athletes, but um, we, we can achieve extraordinary things. Um, and, and, you know, I think that that's really, we want to just keep elevating that idea. So you're, you're such an inspiration, I think, for people who, um, you know, in such a unique position, as you've described, you know, in such a, in such a unique role um, with the world on your shoulders uh, so much. And you're just kind of sitting here real relaxed and we're kind of chatting. And then you think like, wow, you're going to be responsible for walking out on that field. You know, the Super Bowl could be on the line like that, you know, that's your job. That's and right. That and, there, me. and they're so, there are so many situations where, and you see that, I mean, we're, once again, we're, we're all human and we all fail and we, and we will, and, and, and not saying my goal, uh, you know, for a short term and long term, as I put in kind of the notes was my goal is to be hundred percent. And I think that should be any person's goal, especially in the, in the football role as a kicker. Uh, I don't intend to miss, I want to be a hundred percent at everything that I do, but in reality, we're going to miss and we're going to fail. But if we can keep those minimal in the, pro- in the professional aspect and in the national football league, that's how I keep my job. And so I, I guess jumping back to, uh, to my training, um, kickers and punters, we, we put in a lot of work to be the best at, 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 at what we do. And I think that shows you look across the board from 20 years ago to now kickers and punters have improved uh, almost to about the 90% mark on conversion rate. And that's why they backed up the extra point because we were getting so good at our job uh, that the extra point was just a given. It was 100%. So the NFL backed us up, made it a little bit harder. Um, but, you know, we, we are going to fail. And we just have to keep those to a minimal. And we have to continue our, our training and our mental preparation to keep those to a minimal and to block out those distractions. But But you see it on TV all the time. You see kickers miss and – um, you see quarterbacks throw in completions. You see wide receivers drop balls. It just happens to be that kickers are in the spotlight. You know, we're in that game winning situation. We're in that last second field goal. We're in the game tying or game winning um, situation, whether that be for a playoff game or, or a Super Bowl next year. Um, but that that's something that's difficult with our position. And you have to be mental tough and you have to do your job and consistently train your mind to focus and reel all those things back in. But, but that's what I love about what I do because we, we put in a lot of time and effort during the off season and in season to, to be ready for that moment. That's for sure. Yeah. I love that. So let's two final questions I have for you. That's a perfect sure. segue on moments. Um, you mentioned that 52 year old field goal junior year, kind of a game changer. What are two or three other moments in your career that just stick out in your mind? Like, like it was yesterday, very vivid for you. I can remember my, gosh, college career. I, oh, I think I was seventh in all-time NCAA history and in, in percentage conversions. But the one time that sticks out in my mind immediately when you said that, um, I had five field goal attempts against West Virginia. Um, I think it was my junior year of college, uh, and I missed one. I went four for five, and the one that I missed happened to be the game-winning kick. Uh, against West Virginia. And that was such a big game for us uh, for the Big 12, um, going up to the Big 12 championship game and missing that kick. Uh, I don't like that feeling, <laughs> you know, and I don't want that feeling ever again. Um, and that's something that, that really sticks out in my mind was that I'm not going to let that happen again. I'm going to be prepared and uh, mentally and physically and, and know what, what to do in that situation differently to prevent that from happening. So that's that's one thing from college of all the amazing memories that I had in college of, of beating records or having a long field goal or winning a game, all those memories I don't stick out as much as that one that, that I failed and I didn't do my job at. Um, and then the third one, the last one uh, was my first NFL game. Um, and ironically it was against the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I was playing for the Raiders, I think in week five, uh, of the NFL season. Uh, you might have to double check me on what week that was. Uh, but, uh, I went three for five that game, uh, in overtime and had, had a game winning field goal, my, my first NFL game debut. And, you know, as a childhood goal of mine to be at the pinnacle of whatever sport that was and which is now the national football league, you know, I can say that I did it and that, I, that I reached it. Um, and then I'm continuing to live that, that childhood dream out. Um, but I, those of, of all of them, you have the two yard field goal that, that jumps 
you know, the jump started me into, into my profession. Then you have the downfall and that myth against West Virginia in college to then leading up to the make, um, in the national football league, uh, against the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Ironically, I just, I, I, I giggle and I laugh at that because it, uh, you know, when I got to Cleveland, uh, Baker came up to me and he said, you know, that was my first start. And I still, uh, Baker Mayfield said, I still don't forgive you for that one. So that's, uh, pretty cool to have those guys come up and remember those moments, but that was, that was a good one for sure. Yeah. That's so funny. That is quite the, quite the irony. Well, I think uh, I always encourage, you know, one of the things we do with the Fit Fighter team is have a pep rally on Fridays. It's basically a team meeting, but I call it a pep rally just for fun. Yep. And we talk about, uh, you know, s- small wins that week, you know, and, and moments to remember just to make sure that we're sort of keeping our sights, you know, keeping our sights set on like, you know, appreciating the, the big moments and the small wins. So um, that's right. That's that's right. really, yeah, it's really special to hear about, hear about some of yours. Um, as we close out, I'd love to just give you the chance to kind of share anything we missed, anything that you want to sort of, you know, leave us with, or we can, can close up shop, but this has been an amazing conversation. Um, so many great nuggets that I'm going to chop up and keep spitting out like lot, you know, into the, into the future. Um, anything you want to leave us with Matt? Sure. Yeah. I, I kind of want to end with, you know, my faith in, in, uh, in Jesus Christ and, uh, just my relationship with him and knowing that uh, because of the, the, the life that we have, that's up and down in, in my profession, that that's for me, the last three years, that's all it's been has been ups and downs and, and knowing that there's a plan for me. And ever since, you know, I, you can do a, a quick rewind in my head of all the memories that I had from when I was a child and then slow down to when I was a kid kicking, you know, a, a soccer ball into a little youth goal at age three to now where I am, uh, life's a bumpy road, you know, and, it, and it's those ups and downs that get us to where we are, but we just continuing one day at a time, keep going up and up and up to our final goal. Um, and I can say if it, if it wasn't for that, it wasn't for my faith and my family support, um, man, it, it would be a rough life. It really would. But, uh, you know, and then I guess my second point to end it would, would be hard work, you know, and anything's possible. If you want to achieve your goal and whatever that be athletically or something else, uh, you can definitely do it. And a quick little story, if you don't mind, I, I'll never forget when I went to college at Kansas state, five, 10, 110 pounds, I, uh, or hundred, 160 pounds. I, I wore an NFL shirt. I had an, a, a Nike shirt that had the NFL logo on it. And I wore it into, into the locker room one morning. Um, this was before I was starting kicker. I was a young freshman at the time and the upperclassmen looked at me kind of funny and they're like, you think you're going to make it into the NFL? And they were laughing at me for wearing an NFL shirt. I, I remember that moment, uh, pretty good. And, uh, you know, to be in that it, and in that spot now and looking back, uh, it was hard work for me and it was the, the off season conditioning and the training and the coaching and gosh, all those things that added up to where we are now. Um, it, that is a memory that I'll never forget along with, with many others, but, um, that's something you could end with is just that, you know, anything that's possible, you know, hard work beats talent any day. Um, and I think that aligns with the fit fighter mentality and, and you, Sarah, and, and that's something that, that stuck with me. And so I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to work with you guys and, and be a part of this whole thing. So thanks for having me on. Matt, thank you. So grateful to have you as that ambassador. And that's a perfect story to end on because I am, I totally agree. And I'm so grateful that you've been with us today. So thanks so much. And uh, we'll, we'll make sure to, to connect, you know, if anyone wants to sort of connect through us, you know, to you, a young athlete or reaches out, whatever, we'll, we'll make sure that happens. So if you're out there listening, make sure you reach out to me and to our Fit Fighter team, DM us on social media and let us know that you listened. And, um, and uh, wow, what a great conversation. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Sarah.